Joining us next is Aslam Mohammad, Managing Director at Netcon Global Technologies. He will be focusing on the topic of leveraging APIs for aviation. Great. Good afternoon, okay. everyone. Prashant, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can see your slide. So stage is yours. OK, great. Prashant, only one request I have. There is a video yeah. embedded there. If you don't get yes. a sound and video, just uh, raise your hand or let me know. I will sure, speak sure. as you go on. It's about a couple of minutes. Yeah? Sure. I think it's a, it's a good uh, session soon after the NDC, where Anne was mentioning about uh, the APIs and how APIs can help airlines to, uh, to uh, use non-aero areas into the airline uh, revenues. It was a very interesting one. I think I'll build on to that. So. Uh, what I'll do is instead of jumping there straight away into the what APS could help in aviation, I will show you one uh, a real life. A, a, uh, a real life use case, which actually used APS to gain the momentum and uh, change the, the way travel happens in a particular airport. So let's get into that. So we all know what happened in the pandemic, and uh, this refers to an Indian airport, and happened to be uh, heading IT there at that time in Bangalore Airport, and uh, in India suspended all domestic flights, and we, like elsewhere happened in the world, many places, and aviation put to full stop. The whole industry of AV industry, particularly airlines and airports, were all confused including the government itself, what to do, what not to do, how to go about, when to resume the flights back, what kind of precautions which taken, and uh, what is right, what is wrong, and what would save, what would could create pandemic more troublesome. It was very, very frustrating to everyone, and uh, particularly the people at uh, executive level in the all industry, one side you see the revenues draining, other side you see you can't even take a flight, can't operate anything. It was all frustrating everywhere. So there was a new normal had come in. We, we all knew nothing new here right now, but it was a new normal at that time. We didn't talk about two years ago. So everywhere there was a SOPs coming out, everything was changing, ever changing guidelines. Even government couldn't, all the governments, not only just Indian government, governments couldn't fathom the uh, depth of the problem. If you see, uh, this has showed two dates here. On May 21st, government of India declares that domestic air travel will start from May 25th, given four days a gap of it. Prior to that, they let the others know it, the particular airports and airlines, but it was all together about not more than about 10 to 12 days. So all things are new, if you look at here. Everything was new. Uh, the, uh, the guidelines were new, and uh, there was everywhere puts do's and don'ts. We all traveled, we know what happened to the, in the airports even including the other uh, modes of transport. Apart from mass sanitization, social distancing, contactless, everything came to picture. So now, how did we react to it? There is everybody reacted in one fashion, that they started putting things into uh, people and they started looking at how to handle the, uh, movement, of the uh, movement of the passengers without having to touch the people, handshake. So, but at Bangalore, we took it a bit differently. We said, we'll go to the A, technology to make use of the contactless uh, experience and bring a difference in the uh, whole journey itself. This is a kind of, uh, 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 to be precise, this photo, what is appearing here, had appeared on, uh, on, uh, on the day of uh, resuming in the Future Travel Experience magazine, in the, which is globally well recognized as a um, measure for the customer experience and the travel. So this is uh, the, this. Hope you are able to hear the video, audio. This is the uh, uh, the experience. What has changed? It's about a couple of minutes video, a self-explanatory video. You could see it and see what what has changed in here, and you can see how technology has been utilized here. See, now this whole thing link in, interlinked to the backend systems of airlines and uh, airports.
the whole kiosk is contactless now. Everything it does in his mobile phone. All through technology. Printed the back tag as well. And he'll use his own self back tag. Every you can see contactless. All using the scan, scan, only scans. See, uh, as it goes, even the security guys use the technology there. If you have traveled domestically in Bangalore, you can see still this, this thing is still in, all in operations now, in, much, in more advanced stage now. Even at the boarding gate, everything is contactless. We created a different experience for the journey for the journey for the customers. So this is a real life experience full cut here. And but, but you know the, the complex ecosystem was there to integrate now. It's so easy to look at it. Oh, what's what's, what's good? But look at the background. You have the passengers here who come in there. It is the airport. The airport has own systems. The airport has own processes. The airport has its own compliances. And the security agencies are there. They will not let you easily move unless you comply to them. And they need to ensure the identity is done rightly. Right flight is there. And handling agents who handle the flights. And then the civil aviation ministry changing the rules. And so many airlines. These are all Indian airlines. I just brought it to show it for the context. All these Indian airlines fly from Bangalore. All these have to be brought on board. And obviously, the, uh, the large players. I think, in fact, Prashant asked a question about your GDSAs and your players in uh, uh, air, the airline. These are the people which are very key players. Now it is Amadeus, Sita, Sabre. You have to bring them on board. And in all this to be done in two weeks' time. We could do it leveraging APIs. If APIs had not been there, this would have been not possible at all. So we leveraged APS as much as possible, the existing APS with all the systems, the integrators, and also we created a few more APIs. We brought in the new, the new tools and some of the scanning equipment. And during the lockdown time, you can imagine, all this happened lockdown time, the people are working remotely and uh, are from home. And so only a few people are allowed with the, uh, with the, uh, the security passes. This is all we could do because of API leveraging it. So APS bring in enormous benefit in integrating solutions, integrating things, and moving and giving the right outcomes for the business, and particularly in aviation. So in two weeks' time, whatever you did it, what was the outcome impact for the business? If you look at here, I've shown three ways. That the video, what you saw it right now, had a 415 million views, sorry, 415,000 views. This is a, not a, a pop show, not a, a pop singer singing, not, a, not, not a, any movie here, popular movie. It is a functional system of an airport. And you found so many people viewing it. And, and, and that shows the, 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 how it was clicked. And all largely it's at the same time, two years. In a whole world was watching it. And the Ministry of Aviation, the minister himself, quoted this as the one of the technologies we should take forward. And he did it on 26th May. If you recall, 25th May was the day when the flight started. That means we were up and running with all the things that are running on the day of the first flight restart. And he quoted on that, said this is the right thing to go forward for all the industry. And a global recognition from the industry itself. As I mentioned, Future Travel Experience is a, is a magazine and now it is a conference setup for the travel experience for the airlines and airports. And they had identified 13 trends which would change the recovery of industry in 2021, which is still happening in 2020 now. And the first technology they mentioned was contactless technology. 
under in the first paragraph of that dimension bangalore report this is how we got it uh, our place into the industry appreciation of governments and the public which is how uh, the whole bangalore report moved and bangalore report since then for last two years had been voted as the best airport in the south east asia the south asia and uh, for its uh, the customer service one of them is this particular uh, technology that is played there hope it's making sense there so this is what any use case i wanted to sh show it to you and see what aps could do aps can do could do and we can make use of as a technology expert as a business uh, domain function expert it is requires bit of a thinking bit of a planning bit of doing it and handshake across the collaborating with the entities intra and inter for a business okay i'll now touch upon the uh, 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 aps in a, uh, in the aviation business landscape itself just to give you a flavor of it i had worked across the aviation i have worked across the airlines i worked across the cargo side of the airline worked across the retail side of the airline and the airports and ground handling and and also the travel agencies so i have seen uh, the business landscape across the uh, domains and also the kind of systems and the kind of regulations are there so what i believe from the business perspective from the aviation business perspective these are the areas where aps can bring in the benefits revenue enablers obviously everybody wants revenues to grow up particularly post pandemic now people are looking for how to grow the revenue it's not just the revenue also the the uh, the bottom line because revenue is only one component the bottom line is a more important factor particularly if you look at what the fuel prices are there and i do remember and talking about while she's talking about the ndcs saying that airlines have lower set of single digit profit margins a very low margin business and then customer delight obviously and everybody wants the customer to be repeat customer and airlines want loyal customers and now airports are competing we in, in middle east where we are in dubai now dubai competes with doha and both compete with uh, abu dhabi and now saudi is saying we are not far behind we want to bring our customer delight to our airports people do travel transit through us so if you look at here the main transit hubs in the world are dubai doha london hong kong singapore and some of these to name a few are seoul and if you see all these airports uh, uh, are the ones which are voted the best airports in the world many of them have the sky the sky tracks ratings of customer for five star ratings and these are the airlines which compete also for the uh, the uh, uh, the a uh, skytrax awards the as the best airline in the world that is always singapore airlines cathay uh, qatar airways the three airlines always on top if you look at top 10 airlines 7 to 8 will be from the uh, asian perspective it's all customer delight that is the key this thing industry collaboration obviously so ndc is one classic example which ann is talking about and iata is another one which brings industry collaboration the number of collaboration can happen within industry i'll you just walk through In a, in a in a in a in a minute there, an operational efficiency which everyone is looking for the bottom line to grow. What can be done? Said and done across this, data intelligence and AI ML play a key role, which APS can leverage to bring in the actionable intelligence and actionable uh, uh, AI, which can help airlines and airports. act and then bring the benefits to the concerned businesses let's look at each one let's spend a couple of minutes before we wind up so particularly on the revenue enablers see all airline booking platforms which are all e-commerce platforms every airline has its own platform and also work with otas that is expedia mytravel.com there so many of them there and trip advisor every everybody is ota now including google itself is ota now so if you look at the airline booking platforms and otas which airlines can integrate with so many other functionalities and bring in there to the apis and and get the benefit for everybody the whole ota concept itself and on apis and now everybody wants classic example which 
Anne was mentioning about NDC. NDC is the uh, new distribution channel, is all on APIs. What is that do the new distribution channel for the airline? To say that apart from flying alone, you get these, these, these comfort factors or plus plush flat factors by flying by airline. Along with that, people want to make use of ancillary revenues, they call it, non aero revenues. That is, I should be able to sell insurances, taxis, holidays. If, where I fly, I work with my tour operators there, fly, sell holidays. Every airline wants to do this and get some mileage out of it. And some of the airlines uh, target this to be good 4 to 5 percent of their, their, their whole revenue, particularly low cost airlines. And they, and they also sell the retail F and B in the in their, their in flight. All this happens through the APS using APS and quote share alliance partners. Every airline wants a quote share. For example, classic example, the uh, uh, Qatar Airways has quote share with the Indigo, and um, uh, and same way with uh, 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 Emirates has a, a, another quote share with uh, uh, the SpiceJet. And Air India is part of Star Alliance. Just talk to Indian market alone. If you go into the Europe market, the Star Alliance, Sky Alliance, uh, and One World are very common. And, and these things, if you look at here, what's happening there? They want to share the information about their, uh, their flight, their, their, uh, their info, uh, loyalties. Their, sometimes they're, uh, they're building the prices by joining the two legs together and benefit it. All this can happen through handshake of information, through APIs. And Prashant asked this good question to uh, uh, and GDSS. Why only this Sabre, Amadeus, and Travel Port are so popular as uh, GDSS? What's happening? Obviously, they charge enormous uh, arm and leg to the airlines. So most of the LCCs avoid GDS. They, they go direct or through some agents, but they go direct. Now the traditional airlines also following the bypass here. Can I do go direct to the agents? Can I go direct to the customer? Direct to customer, they knew go through the booking platform. Even to the agent, travel agents, they want to bypass the GDS. This is a, there is one, 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 one of the service providers called Fair Logics is very, very popular in that. So this all happens through APIs. Payment gateways, we all know, whether it's the airline or hotel anywhere, or even your e-commerce channels. Payment gateways are than three APS. Yeah. This is not only passenger side, air cargo. Air cargo has similar revenue enablers, and particularly post pandemic, you remember, prior to pandemic, the air cargo is generally about nine to 11% for an airline, of a, uh, 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 of a hybrid airline where the passenger cargo both are there. And some airlines had up to 15, 16% of the, car, the whole revenue coming from cargo side. But with the pandemic coming in, the, the, the cargo co component has gone much higher. And some of the airlines like uh, Qatar Airways, Emirates, or the, or the, uh, the Asiana, they gone up 20 20% as well. And, and the yield is very high, unlike passenger side. Yield is extremely high. So air cargo has a lot of APIs integrating supply chain. Customer delight. Self-service at any point in time is the main thing. And particular self-service with the with the personalization is the talk of the day. You target the customer with his personal interest. So all this can happen through APIs. Loyalty is a phenomenal API uh, components. Not only just uh, for the uh, loyalty milk creation, redemption across third parties. You can use the loyalty of a, a, a airline ticket miles, go to the hotel and use it, or go to the restaurant and use it, and vice versa. And, uh, and uh, providing information, fingertips to sell uh, to the customer delight. Uh, baggage, your ba so many of us know, uh, my, my baggage will be on this belt, or my flight will arrive at this gate. Information comes to your fingertips through messaging, through WhatsApp, through on the, on the, on the website. This is the, 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 the customer delight. You can make customer feel that airline is treating you as a, a star, or an ex privileged customer. And providing touch at all touch points, including in the air, not just on the ground at home, but in the air as well. In in-flight entertainment, APS can be linked there. 
quite a bit of it. Now, you know, many of you know, in the, uh, there is a Wi-Fi available there, and they also uh, uh, airlines make use of it to sell cross sell. And obviously, service quality. Whole thing goes to service quality. Whether it's an airport or airline, the service quality is measured, and the awards are provided for that. So it is a very important factor of it. The data intelligence part is a continuous part across every area. You can use that. Obviously, industry collaboration. An airport, so whoever is in airport has some kind of experience. You see, airport is not just an airline, not an airport alone. You find ground handling people who are on the ground to like in the Dubai, you see Danata, and uh, and yes, elsewhere you'll find other people. Then you find the people on cargo side. You will be people on catering, caterers, the people on the fuel, and if you can keep on adding like this, the forty to fifty players are there, including security. So now a flight gets delayed, a flight get changes, the whole thing will change. So if you use APIs to communicate that information across the industry players and also decisions, if you use this, this platform of communication to make decisions using APIs, it is a phenomenal uh, 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 service quality improvement and phenomenal cost saving improvement for the, each one of the entities. And obviously the, 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 the faucet turnaround, whatever. And industry, IATA industry, uh, has come out with initially like one ID. One ID is a uh, uh, is a one identification stands for. I just use my passport, or I use my one of the identification. This thing, I walk through from uh, uh, New York to Timbuktu. Whether I go through any number of uh, uh, border security points, uh, airline security checkpoints, all those things should be walked through. I don't need to have to uh, produce my ID every time, open it up and show it. My passport or my face or my uh, uh, ticket should be ID. These are standards coming in. Generally, is going to biometric facial recognition here. F use face as a passport. So this is the one which is industry is uh, promoting it now, and uh, most of the people who participate there. Now, all it will happen the APIs, sharing the information. One record is a similar thing for the cargo side of it. Uh, yeah, as the freight moves from from one end to another end of the uh, from the shipment to the Kanzaidi, shipper to Kanzaidi, all information can be shared and in a standard formats. This is where uh, Anne was telling about the standardization is very critical here. That is where issues come up, participation. MRO, MRO is maintenance, repair, and overhauling. This is for uh, uh, who is the innovation? No, MRO is the most expensive part of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, air and operations other than the fuel. And uh, you, you manage the aircrafts there, you manage the spare parts there. You manage the lease, leasing options there. Mm -hmm. All these are very, very expensive affairs. And uh, uh, these ones, when they come into the picture, and uh, if they integrate, they say Boeing and Airbus, classic example of OEMs, your Rolls Royce and airlines and leasing company, they can exchange the information among themselves. They can save enormous on the maintenance side and the spare side. Alliance, yeah. we've talked about alliances now. We need to talk about stars, sky, one world. Alliances, they not only just they share the information about passengers and revenue, there are uh, uh, forums, they share about uh, this common buying, common uh, 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 loyalty, etc. etc. Yeah, Aslam, we are uh, running short of time, so okay, fine. Uh, I'll just pose one question to you, uh, which came so you have been um, on the different parts of the av aviation industry airport airlines everything so uh, and so from looking from the airport point of view what are those three changes i changes in the it side of airlines that you would like to see uh, which will make the life easier for everybody for all the stakeholders concerned see i i can go back to the quick one uh, uh, on the on the time from i think you got a couple of minutes to just quickly cover that it's uh, uh, 30 it seconds in... yeah okay. yeah sure sure Okay, so basically, if you look at here, digital transformation, mm -hmm. industry 4.0. For this to succeed, uh, uh, APIs are very critical. Without mm -hmm. using APIs, you will not be able to do any digital transformation across the aviation. And the key ones are uh, the security, sustainability, uh, another two aspects are coming to airline, apart from the uh, customer experiences, which everybody knows of it. This right. security is because that's where you heard one ID. Because if mm. the more and more people traveling across now, uh, the borders become very, very important. And then, and then sustainability. 
because all airlines are looking at the green. The green has become a very, very common factor of it now, measuring carbon uh, footprint. And the yeah. carbon footprint is given a lot of this thing for both airlines and airports. And these are a few things that are coming up. Only digital transformation across the airline domains, whether it is a retail, non, uh, a, a airline, cargo, and uh, handling, and the sustainability and the uh, security. I'll, I'll stop at that. And for everything, okay. there are te technology solutions coming in. And uh, innovation and digital transformation the key now. Uh, and disruption. Yeah. Right. Yeah. OK, great. Yes, uh, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Aslam, for joining us here at uh, APA Days Dubai and Middle East and you know, sharing your views on yes, um, what all, how, how uh, showing us that glimpse of uh, how the change has happened at, by uh, taking a real example. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Great, Prashant. Thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks for providing the opportunity to speak to APA Days. Thank you.